Hello everyone, I'm with you, Ivan Zenkovich, and now I'll tell you about the car that I really dreamed of as a child. Meet Moskvich 2140SL, or 2140117, or 2140 Super Lux, people called it by many different names. Why did I dream? Because exactly the same Moskvich 2140SL, only a little different color, stood like a dead weight in my yard and evoked only positive emotions in me. Why dead weight? Well, because the Super Lux was not written by ordinary people, it was distributed among people burdened with power, diplomats, representatives of the trade mission, people who traveled abroad and had certain connections. By the way, Super Lux was the first car of the domestic automotive industry, which began to be painted with metallic. Well, unfortunately, today we don't have a metallic, just such a red, red brick, about which I will now, in fact, tell you. You may ask. What is the difference between Super Lux and a simple 2140? You can also ask how 2140 is different from 412, and 412 is different from 408. But by and large, nothing. Why? And one car, and the other is a beautiful rear-wheel drive car on a spring suspension, which has not changed much over the course of a huge number of years. The appearance of the Mosvich 2140 Super Lux is an attempt by Aftovi AZ. Excuse me, guys. The appearance is an attempt by AZLK to jump into the outgoing steam locomotive, which was earning currency for the Moscow plant. Because the usual 2140 simply ceased to be sold abroad, or rather it was sold, but very weakly, because the car was simply fundamentally outdated. Firstly, the Olympia was on the nose, and secondly, the output of the Divine VAZ 2105 loomed, which at that time should have been beautiful. For this reason, AZLK decided to create something in order to earn currency and not disgrace itself before government bodies. Yes, exactly. Well, in general, so that the car is a little younger. So what's the difference? And that's just... in this. The only difference is these Divine plastic bumpers two-piece, with built-in parking lights and turn signals, made in Yugoslavia. Especially for this model, they made these amazing lips, did you appreciate it? And of course, the radiator grill, with holes for the wipers. I don't know if they were ever here. Maybe there were. Connoisseurs of the life and history of Moskvich's, in particular my sometimes too smart friend, will probably spam the comments with the truth of life, but it seems to me so. The bumper is amazing. Everything here is drop dead, because it was done with love and, independently. They even had their own discs without these navels for hubcaps. On the side, far-sighted designers placed a molding with a chrome strip, and did not forget about the inscription SL. For everyone to understand, super lux. Of course, in our understanding, this is a Mercedes SL, but it is also a Mercedes. Black frames, no vents, no chrome. Unusual. If it were painted in color here, then it could safely be called a foreign car. Well, in the sense of a car that is designed for foreign drivers. Although amazing, all the cars of this model went abroad in greater numbers. Headlights. From polycarbonate, as for foreign cars, and they were also made, by the way, abroad and only for Moskvich's. And, of course, the bumper. The only thing I never liked was this. Here. Tank. You understand? Tank. The tank is in the... Well, what about the trunk? Everything is cool, everything is the same as on the 40th. Because it's all the same as on the 40th. Sorry. SL. Moskvich. It is written in English. You definitely understand that, this is a foreign car, right? Yes? So, the motor. Yeah. Oh. You may ask me, what's new under the hood? And I will answer you that there is absolutely nothing new here, like this. Here we have the UZAM412 gasoline engine, produced for the AZLK by the UFI Aviation Engine Plant. UZAM412 was produced from 1966 to 2001, so that you understand. 1.5 liters, 75 horsepower, 114 newton meters at 300 to 3800 rpm, all with the same stupid filter that tried to break off on any slipping stump, lying slightly on its side. Everything is the same, gentlemen, comrades. 
Nothing new, nothing progressive. Well, I don't know, Hydrovac Lux. Lou. Lucas. As I said, a foreign car. Such a sad foreign car. To cheer up the already vigorous engine, a KAAZ carburetor was installed here, the same on the Ziguli, and this, by the way, is a licensed Weber. There is a good illumination of the engine compartment. Here it is. Here it is. But it seems to me that it just creates some such element of intimacy, comfort, when you break down somewhere at night, because that's all. That's all. We must carefully sit down, this car, by the way, is for rich Soviet people. Anyone could not buy it. When the door is open, I'm not cramped. And when it's closed, it's creepy to me how cramped it is. But getting into the luxurious laconic interior of this car, you understand that the car is radically different from its I don't know how, from its older brother. Have you seen this plastic instrument panel? By the way, an interesting fact, it was developed by the Americans, it cost 80,000 American rubles, but paradox, from an ergonomic point of view, it did not go into production because it was made incorrectly, but such nonsense happens, and our Soviet designers developed everything themselves. In principle, the style remained approximately the same, but please note, low torpedo. Did you note? Someone will say that it's like a VAZ-2108. Well, in principle, yes. AZLK wanted to prove its superiority over AFTOVAZ by the anniversary. Well, or rather, not even for the anniversary, but for the Olympics 80. But again, one more snag. 21 SL. Now the person will pass. Oh sure. You see, we work among the people. 2140 Superlux appeared many years earlier than VAZ-2108. So this is not plagiarism. Let's put it this way, Ziguli stole the idea from Mospich. And so we will consider, what do we have here? Very similar to the switches, like the Ziguli, the same can be said about the toggles. There are a lot of decisions like on the Zigula, visually they are the same, who stole from whom. By the way, for the first time head restraints appeared on cars, they were not on previous cars. We do not take Ziguli into account. For 2105 there are large head restraints. Have you seen the flashlight? For some reason, a flashlight. The owner told me, I would not have paid attention to the fact that the interior flashlight is in the back seat. Well, probably like this, according to AZLK specialists, it is necessary to use a light bulb from behind. I just don't see any other options. Inertial belts that I could not pull out, and therefore do not ask why I am not fastened. The thing is that I could not catch this divine moment when the belt gives in. Have you seen the dashboard? Wait a second. Look. There's an electronic clock. Foreign car. Devices, by the way, are slightly deployed towards the drivers. I hope they didn't fail because of age, but that's how it was. Plastic, everything is beautiful, everything is neat, everything is feng shui everywhere. That's right, there are hairy carpets. From below, this is also not some kind of garage invention, when they made it from old home carpets. Everything was like that, from the factory. And, a comfortable rear sofa. Moskvich is a good car, but for whom it was done, for some narrow-shouldered characters. The Russian heroes are cramped in it. Well, okay, now we'll try to start it. Oh, and I completely forgot the radio. 2140SL from the factory already came with a radio. What was its name there? Only funny words come to mind. Okay, it's basically the same thing. So, oh, there's also leg lighting. Guys, you won't believe it. See? Wait a minute. Lord, where is it? What for? Why does anyone need leg lighting? Why do you need a light bulb in the back of the cabin?
Behind. That's it. There is nothing more to tell. I always say that I like the Moskvich engine, but it has to be turned. This engine loves to be turned. On the bottoms, something is not right, somehow wrong, somehow it twitches all the time. Gearbox 4 speed, well, normal, normal. But without a synchronizer, then it just broke down and, well, it just broke down. Okay, didn't get stuck. Nineteen seconds to sixty miles. Well, isn't it bolide? Nineteen seconds. And for those times, this, of course, is not super performance, but normal. Flow rate, 3.5 gallons. Someone will say less, someone will say more. But for me, all Soviet cars are always 3.5 gallons per 100 miles. Well, I'm calmer. When I count this figure, I will always get to the gas station. And we didn't fill up a full tank, but just a little. Well, it was a pity for the money. The maximum is 88 miles per hour according to the documents, but I know the guys, I personally know the guys, who dispersed this closet, well, not this one, but the same closet, much faster. Well, in order to decide on this, you need to be a very brave guy, because when you sharply enter a turn in a Moskvich, it bends down with its whole body, all these springs are squeezed, it crunches, creaks, but the bastard, it doesn't leave the trajectory, do you understand? Despite the fact that the body tilts, it still enters the turn as you need. Well, the brakes, of course, so-so. But where were they better, on the Ziguli, or what? In general, what am I talking about? Moskvich 2140 Superlux really defeated the VAZ 2105 in 1980. But these words are not so unambiguous, there are other nuances. Another thing is that the Ziguli were more massive, more common, more publicized, if I may say so. 170,000 cars were produced, specifically such 2140th. The 4 millionth car was exactly the Super Lux. But where are they all, these Super Luxes? Half of them went abroad. Here? Well, the 90s, and fellow metal collectors, in fact, greatly crippled the army of Moskvichs. And not only Lux, everyone. Therefore, today Super Lux is really Super Lux. To date, these are machines that are practically gone. Therefore, it was especially pleasant for me to review this device today. Those that are, thank God, they are cared for and cherished, for which many thanks to the owners. And if I had to choose from all the Moskvichs, probably my favorite car is the 2140th. Well, preferably in the color golden metallic. That's right. But I won't buy it for myself. Because it's Moskvich. And how does a stove work? This is its sound, this is the sound of comfort, you understand, the stove seems to want to howl with its sounds the blowing of the winter wind. Ida seems to be saying, don't be afraid, I'm warming you, I'm caressing you. Here you don't even need to turn on the music, there is already good musical accompaniment. The bridge howls, the wheels hum. By the way, it was decided to make a separate rubber for 41 SL. And after that, they began to put it on other 40s Moskvichs. It's all there, you know, here, here is the sound of life. I will never stop repeating this joke. If it became quiet in the Soviet car, then this car is dead. Do you hear? And from somewhere in the depths it breaks through. Pain, struggle. And only such machines as this one, brought up from inexperienced young men, to real, battle-hardened men. Believe me. As planned, 2140 Superlux managed to return the foreign exchange income for AZLK, but only for a short time. 
Because the reality was changing, Soviet cars were hopelessly outdated. They tried to revive them, tried to remake them, but only with the advent of the 41st Mosvich did something get better. Yes, something get better. But the state was already falling apart, everything was coming to an end and, alas, it ended unsuccessfully. But the super lux will forever remain, probably, the reference beautiful car. I, Ivan Zenkovich, was in touch, and I have one serious request to you. Do not be these bad fashion boys, rate the video, share it on social networks, put likes, press the bell. Because I like to try for you, to search and search for cars, Soviet ones, and tractors, and life is beautiful, and I didn't break anything, bye. The hunt continues.